Hi, I'm Megan Walker and in this video I want to go back to basics. I want to go back to the beginning of somebody using Dynamics 365 marketing and that's actually getting it installed. So one of the things that I'm noticing more and more frequently now is requests for implementations or training on marketing and a lot of times someone's already installed it um, and didn't necessarily know exactly what they were doing uh, maybe installed pieces that they didn't need so this video is designed for anyone that is either installing it within their own environment or maybe has a new client and has never done it before and wants to kind of understand what to do so let's go ahead and jump in and take a look and see the process in terms of getting Dynamics 365 marketing installed. All right, so we are logged into the Power Platform Admin Center. So if you haven't been there before, um, then it's admin.powerplatform.microsoft.com. And when you're logged in, the top part is environments, and this will show you any of the environments that you have. So if you're in the Dynamics 365 world, you're likely going to have a production and hopefully you have a sandbox environment as well. And then we'll also see that default one, which is the default Dataverse one that we are staying away from. So we only want to install Dynamics 365 Marketing in an environment that is a Dynamics environment. So what we're gonna do first of all, is if I just go into an environment that I know I've already got marketing set up, I'm just going to show you the different places that you can see information about the marketing app. So this is the sort of overview page of our sandbox environment. And if I come over here to the right hand side and I click on Dynamics 365 Apps, what this does is it will give us a list of all of the Dynamics 365 related apps that have been installed as part of this sort of environment. So if I scroll down here, I can see that we've got Dynamics 365 marketing application and we can see that it is installed. And if I click here, I've got the option to have details and it shows me what's actually installed there. So that's great, but if I have an environment, so if I go back to my production environment and I do the same thing and I look at my list of Dynamics 365 apps, we can see here that we don't have marketing. So it's not already installed. So what do we need to do? Well, first of all, you must have a subscription that includes the Dynamics 365 marketing license. It's not the same in terms of if you've got a regular Dynamics license for sales or customer service, you assign that to a user. You purchase Dynamics 365 marketing and you're buying that rather than a license for in, excuse me, individual users. So what we're going to do is we're going to come to resources over in the navigation and from here we're going to click on Dynamics 365 apps. And we're going to scroll down and what we can see is that we've got, in this environment I've got quite a few, but we can see here that this one has, after it, it has an org ID and it shows that this is configured. That's the one that's tied to my sandbox environment. But then I have these other three that have not been configured and if I pick one I can then click on manage. Now that's going to go ahead and it's going to open up into a new tab and it's going to go to the admin area for this specific um, uh, license that we have for the Dynamics 365 marketing app. Now because we've already installed this in Sandbox or because I already have it there, my only options are either the production environment or this default one, which we're staying away from. So we're going to put it into production. Now here's the piece that I see unfortunately people not necessarily understanding what this next part is and actually installing information or installing records that are just not needed. So in the web hosting area, we've got two options. We've either got to use your own web server or we've got use Dynamics 365 portal or Power Apps portal. Now, what this is referring to is if you create a web form and you want somebody to be able to fill that out and when they fill that out it creates a lead record or it updates a contact or you're going to do events but you're just going to do online webinars and you want people to be able to register for webinars that kind of thing if you pick that you want to use a power apps portal then that will install a whole portal into your environment 
and it will be expecting that any form you create or any page or landing page or anything is that it will be hosted and you'll have a URL that will be tied to that portal instead and that's where your form will be sort of shared and, and filled out from. I have yet to work with a client and I've done quite a lot of marketing implementations, I've yet to work with one that actually needed the Power Apps portal to be installed because everything in terms of creating those forms we take uh, the snippet of code, the JavaScript that's given, and we take that and we put it into their website on their domain that's already customized. We don't need a portal. So, unless you absolutely have a valid reason for a portal, do not set it up. Also, if you just say use your own web server and later on you have a reason to have the portal, fine, we can come back in and we can actually say, now I want to have the portal added. We're not going to do it at this point. There is no reason, unless for some reason you are an organization that wants to have a massive event portal and you want people to be able to register for big events with all these sessions and kind of create their sort of plan of, of all the sessions they're going to go to at that event. Leave it. Just do use your own web server. So that's the biggest thing that I see is that people are putting this portal in which is a ton of different record types you don't need. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it as use my own web server and I'm going to click continue. The next thing we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and add in our physical address and that is a legal requirement that has to be there. Uh, and this is the same with any type of marketing app that you might use, MailChimp, ConvertKit, whatever, that has to have an uh, email address that's tied to it that shows up on the bottom of the marketing emails that you send out. Once we go through and we submit that, it then will tell us that it's being set up and the setup is in progress and it says it takes a few hours to complete. And it does, that is accurate. Sometimes I've seen it three, four plus hours. So don't sit there and watch it. Go away and make yourself a cup of tea. Go and do something else, have your dinner, whatever it might be. Do not sit and think, oh, it won't take that long. It will and there's nothing that you'll see other than you'll have this progress bar that will be going across and we'll see what the percentage is in terms of it being completed, okay? Once everything is complete, what you'll end up with is you're going to have this marketing app that will have been installed into that environment. We can then go to the marketing app and from there, you'll be able to then actually start using the system and going through and, and setting things up and testing emails, that kind of thing. So it takes a long time. Really, the biggest thing is just make sure that you don't install a portal. Again, unless you have a really good reason for it, don't go with the portal. Um, likely you will not use it and it's much easier to add later than have to try and deal with taking it out um, if you put it in by mistake. So. Hopefully that helps, like I said, kind of back to basics, just a quick way in terms of going through and seeing how you actually install the portal. Very, very easy, just takes a bit of time. And again, do not put the portal in. Hope this helps. Let me know what you think or if you've got questions in the comments below. Thanks. Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. If you don't want to miss out on any other content, you can go ahead and click on my face below to subscribe. And if you want to watch the next video, you can do that by clicking over here and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.